Is it more important that a website is easy to use or that it's very aesthetic and innovative? In other words, should a website knock your socks off or just let you do that thing that you want it to do in the first place? Today we're designing a website from scratch for Citrus and we're also going to just look at what our job as web designers actually is. In the episode we shared a few weeks back, we actually designed the full brand for Citrus, including packaging and even product photography for social media. With all of this in mind, the first step to creating an effective website is to start with a user journey. Regardless of how revolutionary your web design will be, we all have a shared language for web design. When I visited Korea a few years back, I was actually able to order from one of the machines there, even though I didn't speak any Korean, because the language of where the next button and the accept and pay button were was so universal that it was just easy for me to understand where everything was. When we try to reinvent things like where the burger menu should go or where the next button should be, it just becomes a lot harder to use the website. So what we want to do as web designers is think of how we can innovate and make our website engaging, but at the same time stick to the principles that makes it easy to use. Therefore, our website design needs to consider both the goal of the website and how tech savvy someone is, because that might dictate how innovative you can actually be with your design choices. For Citrus, our goal is for someone to either place an order if they're kind of a warm lead, or maybe to sign up for a newsletter if it's someone that has just discovered the brand but might not be quite ready to actually buy a product yet. Having multiple goals like this is quite common for brands and it's something that means that we can catch people at different points of their journey and make a sale more likely in the long run. For Citrus, the audience is millennials who are working a lot and trying to slow down and have a little bit more calm in their life. I expect them to be quite tech savvy, both because they're millennials, but also because they have busy jobs where they're likely working at a laptop a lot of the day. Now that we have our two different goals, meaning buying and signing up for a newsletter, let's map out those two different journeys. First, how do they actually find the website and which page are they landing on? Let's start with the people who come from Instagram and go to the homepage. Because they come from Instagram, they probably are quite familiar with the brand as a whole. They might have seen reels or posts of all the products and they're quite ready to buy. But what we need to do now is to think about what additional information that they might need from that page in order to make that purchase. I would say it's probably the range of products. They probably want to know the price, if it ships to them and how that shipping process works and probably also things like allergens for example since it's a food product. Some might also want to know if there's a local cafe or store that sells the products near them. So we might want to include a stockist list as well. So in terms of our user journey, someone would land on the homepage, maybe click on either the products themselves or on the products tab. And then from there, we can browse the different products and then we can click on the one that we want to buy. Here, we can provide a lot more information like those things that we talked about, like price, allergens, shipping, anything else, like let's say the ethos of the brand that we think could be helpful for someone to be convinced to buy. For the newsletter goal, I'm thinking that they probably Googled a recipe or maybe even seen a recipe on Instagram and then clicked to actually read that recipe. From there, we can have different strategies to encourage them to sign up for a newsletter. We could either have, let's say, a panel on the side where they would always be prompt about the newsletter, or you could do a pop-up, for example. This way, we can offer like a 10% off your first order or recipes in your inbox every month. And that would be a great way to encourage someone to actually want to sign up for that newsletter with content that's already relevant to what they have searched for. Next up, we're gonna dive into wireframing, but before we do that, I just wanna mention a couple things to think about to make your website a bit more sustainable. As designers and creatives, we actually have the power to make our clients' business a lot more sustainable. And that's why I think it's such a great thing to put into your process. First off, we wanna to stick to a website that is easy to use and that loads as fast as possible. The more complex animations or different pages you have to visit, the higher file sizes you have, the longer that page is gonna to take to load and the more energy it's gonna to take to run that website. Having a website that's fast loading is also gonna help your client rank higher on Google because Google really likes websites that are loading super fast. You can still build super beautiful, exciting and innovative websites. Just start with the core things that actually need to be there and then add in the other things as sprinkles when you think that they can enhance the experience. Now I'm in Adobe XD and the very first thing I'm gonna do is set up the different artboards that we have in the user journeys that we've created before. 
I can then add in blocks for images and text I think will help guide the visitors to take those different goal actions. At this stage, we're just thinking about the logic, not the design of the pages. And since we want to build brand loyalty and help make the purchase as smooth as possible, I will also add a homepage, an about page, a blog, and an FAQ page, because I think those will really contribute to the website, both for search, but also for that brand building aspect. I do the same thing here, where I just block out the type of content that we need. If you're unsure what to actually include on these pages, have a browse at competitor websites because that usually gives you an idea. Most of them have a very similar structure and then you can decide where you want to follow that structure or where you want to throw in something different. So let's say for example that your client's products are locally made and the competitors are not. Then you can use the structure itself, but you can make sure that you tailor the messaging, like the language you use and the images you use, and maybe even just adding a section about it being a locally made product. When someone buys from a website, they usually want to understand the what, the why, and the how. The what is just a description of the product, all those practical things like you need, like the allergens and how much is in a package, for example. All of the things we would probably bunch up as features. The why is when you're connecting emotionally. So that's where the branding comes in. Maybe that has to do with how you feel when you use the product or who it makes you as a character. So a lot of people, especially when it comes to things like sustainability or ethics, you like how it makes you feel when you buy a product that aligns with your values. So that's for the why part. And here, things like testimonials can be super helpful. And then the how part is, how does it get shipped to you? How does it get packaged? How long does it take? All of the different practical details. So try to keep these three things in mind, the what, the why, and the how. At this stage, when we have the wireframes, I want to check in with my client and make sure that we have understood the structure correctly. At this stage, I usually have a call and we look at each of the pages one by one, unless it's a massive website. What I do is I tend to send them the link to the interactive prototype after the meeting and they can then go in and leave comments and just try it out themselves. I use Adobe XD because it comes with the Adobe package, but you could also use a program like Figma, for example. It's totally up to your preference, your budgets, everything like that. I feel like the tools should be what you're most comfortable with and what does a good job for you. The tools shouldn't come in the way of your process. Once we have the approved wireframes, now I start putting in the actual content. I usually start with the copy and just any photos that we know we're gonna need to be putting. So very functional images like product shots or photos of people on the about page. This is to get the skeleton first and then we can go in and tinker and add designs later. There are definitely pros and cons to getting the website copy before you do the design. If your client is writing the copy and they're finding it kind of difficult to know how much to write or what to write, having your design guide them and you putting out, you know, lorem for example, that shows how much text they need for each section, that could be super helpful for clients. However, if you are working with a copywriter who is also really strategic, maybe even does keyword research, in that case, it could be really good to have the copy beforehand because in that case, you're able to tailor the design to fit with the messaging. Now let's start applying all of the different brand assets to the Citrus website. A great tip that most programs let you do is set up styles and components. This means that instead of you having to remember what the font size for H1 headings are, you actually just set it up as a rule and then you just have to click that when you want to apply that style. There's also a second benefit to this, which means that if let's say your client has feedback saying, oh, I want all the buttons to change color from the green to the yellow, for example. In that case, you don't actually have to go in and change all those instances. You actually only have to go and change the component or the master. If you're curious about Adobe XD in general, I actually have a Skillshare course all about it. So I'll put it down in the description. You can go check it out if you want to. To keep your website as accessible and inclusive as possible, make sure that you check your color and font contrast with a tool like WebAIM, for example. I'll link that down below as well. But how do you actually translate the essence of the visuals of a brand into a website beyond the colors and the fonts, for example? My approach is always to start with less and then sprinkle in patterns, illustrations, photography, and graphics where the design either feels empty 
or you need another way to guide someone to scroll or take an action. For example, you can add a photo or an illustration that is only partially visible above the fold so that you're encouraging someone to scroll. Keep adding things and evaluate if it's getting distracting or if it's helping make a message more clear. Also, don't forget to preview your design in the size that viewers will actually see it. I tend to make font sizes a little bit too big because I don't want it to be inaccessible, but I'm often zoomed out to see multiple artboards or at least part of different artboards at the same time. So for me, it's always really important to make sure I go into the preview mode to check what my design will look like as it's experienced. Now that the design is in place, it's time to link up the buttons and navigation so our client can get a real idea of how the site will actually function. This is also a great step to make sure you're a developer or if you're both design and developer, avoiding any confusion during the actual build. You can also add direct links to buttons that go to external places. So let's say your client wants to link to their Instagram account, you can also do that as well directly in the prototype. Finally, you might actually want to test the website. And I'm not talking about the functionality of the buttons going to the right place, which yes, test that too. But I'm thinking about you and your client, you've been working on this project for a long time. You know everything inside and out. But what about someone who has never seen it? This is where testing sites like Lusna can come in really handy, where you can do either A-B tests for different sections that you might be wondering about which design option is the best, or you can even do usability tests where you ask very targeted questions. If you have participants that you can invite, you can do it for free for a lot of platforms, but otherwise you do have to pay for each user, but it's quite a small amount and you can get really valuable information. So this is something that could even be good to ask at the proposal stage if your client has a budget for user testing. So here is our final design for the Citrus website. If you're curious to go and poke about and see what the prototype looks like, I actually added a link down in the description so you can go and see this prototype yourself. Next time we're creating a design system, basically a brand guide with a bit more information for the Citrus brand so that anyone who is involved with it is going to be able to make the right choices to represent the brand correctly. If you want more tips on website design, check out this video that I made a while ago designing my own portfolio site. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.